Hello, and thank you for joining me for another one of my talks. The title of this talk is Modern Day Apartheid in South Africa and Western Indifference. The Western ruling elites, through their mouthpiece, mainstream media, present themselves to the rest of the world as the guardians of democracy, freedom, and civilization. That grotesque perversion of truth becomes all the more repulsive and risible when one considers that the Western ruling elites regard themselves as the heirs of ancient Greece. The Western ruling elites and the ancient Greeks are like chalk and cheese. Without the contribution to mankind of the ancient Greeks, the world would be a backwater whereas the contribution to the world by the Western ruling elites can be summed up as murder, rape, pillage, and genocide, as well as having afflicted parts of the world today, including their own, such as America and Britain, with stage four cancer. Accordingly, the contrast between the ancient Greeks and the Western ruling elites could not be greater. Ancient Greece gave birth to Alexander the Great, Hippocrates, Archimedes, Socrates, Plato, Pericles, and Pythagoras, to name but a few, while the Western ruling elites are comprised of Justin Trudeau, Bill Clinton, Tony Blair, Barack Obama, Boris Johnson, Liz Truss, Jacinda Ardern, George Bush Jr., Keir Starmer, and Bill Gates, to name but a few. Suffice to say that in comparing the ancient Greeks with the Western ruling elites, it amounts to beauty and the beast. But let us entertain, just for a moment, the farcical claim by the Western ruling elites that they are, as they arrogantly describe themselves, the guardians of democracy, freedom, and civilization. If the Western ruling elites are the defenders of mankind, then why are they silent concerning how South Africa is now a fully fledged apartheid state in which whites, coloreds, and Indians are legally discriminated against on the grounds of race and are legally marginalized against on the grounds of race? and in which white farmers and their families are being, on a routine basis, literally slaughtered in cold blood because of the colour of their skin. Today, there are 117 racial laws in South Africa, all of which discriminate against the country's minority groups, whites, coloreds and Indians, while simultaneously benefiting the majority group, Blacks. Coupled with the said 117 racial laws is the horrific reality that key state institutions in South Africa, such as the judiciary and the South Africa Broadcasting Corporation, are prejudiced against the country's minority groups and do not attempt to conceal this racism in public. An example of the racist nature of the South African judiciary system is the case in 2022, when a judge ruled that the blood curdling racist inciting chant of kill the boer does not constitute hate, hate speech and is protected under freedom of speech. The consequences of that court ruling have literally been fatal for many members of the Boer community. Emboldened by the ruling and encouraged by public figures such as politicians chanting kill the Boer, killings of white farmers and their families have erupted and the methods used to kill these innocent people have been of the most savage kind, including the slitting of throats. In response, representatives of the Africana community have produced radio advertisements 
which protest against the kill the Boer chant, only for the South Africa Broadcasting Corporation to ban the said advertisements from being aired. Thus, it is clear for all to see that there is a concerted attempt by representatives of the majority group in South Africa, led by the infamous and utterly corrupt African National Congress, to ethnically cleanse the country of its minority groups, especially the whites. Since 1994, the year in which the African National Congress came to power, South Africa's white population has, dr has drastically declined. The systematic killings of whites, coupled with astronomical levels of poverty and corruption, and terrifying levels of violent crime, South Africa is now one of the most dangerous of countries in the world, have caused many whites to leave the country. These men, women and children are refugees, real refugees, and victims of genocide. But despite the reality that South Africa is an apartheid state, the Western ruling elites, along with their mouthpiece, the media, and their so-called human rights groups are silent on the horror. Even though they portray themselves as champions of equality who combat racism, well, it is abundantly clear that those accursed people are extremely selective when combating racism. The simple truth is that the Western ruling elites care for neither whites, nor blacks, nor any other colored group. Instead, they select groups to use as pawns or weapons to satisfy their megalomaniac aspirations. Accordingly, the Western ruling elites are unconcerned about the fate of minority groups in South Africa, as well as in Zimbabwe, where white people are also being ethnically cleansed, because the Western ruling elites seek to maintain their claim to be the defender of black people. Furthermore, if the Western ruling elites were to condemn the genocide of whites in South Africa and in Zimbabwe, this would render the infamous and depraved Black Lives Matter movement, which the Western ruling elites covertly conceived and created, and which they covertly finance and lead, redundant. BLM is too important a weapon of the Western ruling elites, and they intend to continue wielding this weapon for some time to come. It is at this point I am reminded of a quote by Malcolm X regarding white liberals. Now, whilst I am an ardent opponent of Malcolm X's ideology, his observation of the real attitude of white liberals towards blacks was as salient, accurate and pertinent as any such observation could be. He said, and I quote, the white liberal is more deceitful, more hypocritical. The white liberal has perfected the art of posing as the Negro's friend and benefactor. End of quote. Now, I would like to use this opportunity to speak some words about the Africana. I have long revered Africanas, especially Boers. This people are devoted to God, their culture, their ancestors, their land, and their families and friends. Their values are of the, or their values are of the most noble kind. They are disciplined, proficient, orderly, methodical, rugged, and tough, and make for tenacious fighters. The Africana is unbreakable and unconquerable. During the Anglo-Boer Wars, 
in which the Boer fought against the British Empire so that Boers could live as Boers. Numerically superior British soldiers, including the British Army's finest troops, were no match for Boer commandos who demonstrated their zeal for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Unable to militarily defeat the Boer, the British establishment resorted to implementing a scorched earth policy and establishing concentration camps, the first of any kind of any country to do so, where Boer women and children were rounded up and imprisoned in these hellish camps, resulting in nearly 30,000 of them dying agonizing deaths there. As a result of those barbaric acts, the Boer commandos decided for the sake of their women and children to lay down their weapons. Afrikaners have been in Southern Africa for in excess of 300 years. Time and again, they have faced threats to their very existence and have prevailed. And I have no doubt that this magnificent and hardy people will prevail over the current menace to their existence, namely ANC apartheid, something which the Western ruling elites and their mouthpiece, the media, along with their so-called human rights groups, couldn't care less about. At a time when the cultural and spiritual values of peoples in the Western world are facing annihilation because of the heinous agenda of the Western ruling elites, the Afrikaner serves as a shining example to other races of how to successfully defend values, culture and heritage. I salute the Afrikaner. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to listen to this talk.